Bits of a bite, no Seid kann absosus haskata. U jer par matneris vera darza. Ins getashemin him ganzarani. Taran vera patrast kahvatsh banali. Hey, it's so good to be back here today and sharing this time with you called In Step with Christ. I'm glad you're joining us, and we begin today, as I said last week, by offering this message in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm glad you made it back. You know, we spoke last week about the importance of beginning all of our praise, all of our talk, in a very focused manner. Now, this focus is very important in life. It doesn't matter what you do. It's not a question of just religion. It's a question of discipline in all aspects of life, whether you're talking about your school, you're talking about your relationships, your marriages, your boyfriend-girlfriend relationships, or even in your work, work circle. You all know that anybody who is successful in life has this D word, this discipline. Discipline means focus. You look at the greatest of people, it doesn't matter what they do. You look at some of the, the bright people who came into this world and touched us. Now, take, for instance, a Beethoven. I mean, look at the discipline that it took for him to compose such structures of music that have outlasted him, that have outlasted his life. You look at people today, look, well, take anybody for instance, like even sports, uh, sports stars, somebody who plays uh, basketball, I mean, somebody who, who plays football, we're, we're in the Super Bowl season right now, in fact, I think I'm competing against the Super Bowl right now, well, thank you for joining us right here, because in the Super Bowl, what do you see? You see these football players, they didn't just come to be, they practiced, they disciplined, they have a focus in life. And that's where, as an individual, as a Christian, you need to focus in your life. And that's why I say all of our activity begins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, when you focus that way, you're saying that that's what my life is about. I spoke about that last week. Some of you asked, well, what does that really mean? What does it mean, the Father? What does it mean, Son? What does it mean, Holy Spirit? Well, we can get an idea. But the most beautiful way that Jesus describes it, and this is, this is unique to the Christian faith, is that he, he, he lets us understand that God is Father, first and foremost. Now you say, why is that unique? There is no other religion, there is no other faith that refers to God as Father. In fact, during the Badarak, the Holy Divine Liturgy, the priest in his prayers thanks God saying that to all the others, to all of our ancestors, you are known as Lord and God, but to us, you allowed us to call you and dare to call you Father. Well, where did we get that, that ability to call him Father? We learned that from Jesus Christ. He says that he is our heavenly Father and he takes care of us. Oh, what is it? Well, we think about our, our own personal fathers. And whether your father is in your life right now, whether your father is out of your life right now because of death or sometimes tragically because of the relationships we've had, you can still conjure up the image that the father is a parent, is a caring individual. And that's what God is. That's what Jesus tells us our heavenly father is. Somebody who cares about us so much that he doesn't let us falter. He doesn't let us go the wrong way so long as we trust in him. Now that trust is something that we need to start developing. Our Heavenly Father. Who is that Heavenly Father? Somebody who cares about us? Jesus goes one step further. He says, how many of you, if your son or daughter asked for a piece of bread or, a piece, or, or, or something to eat, would go out there and grab a snake and give it to him? <laughs> Jesus, of course, was, was playing with us. There isn't anybody who would go out there and grab a snake and give it when their child is looking up and saying, may I be fed? Jesus said, if your child wants a piece of bread, who would go and take a bunch of rocks and give it to them? Again, Jesus is playing with us because he knows that we, as people, 
with all of our faults, would never do that. And he says that. He says, if you, evil as you are, know how to take care of your children, how much more will your heavenly Father, who is good, take care of all of those who ask of him? And so Jesus instructs us to refer to, the fa- to, to God as Father, and he says, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven. Unfortunately, many times people call this the Lord's Prayer. Even in Armenian, Derunagan Agot. This is not the Lord's Prayer. Jesus could never pray this prayer. You know why? Because in it, it says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now Jesus was without trespass. He was without sin. So this, the proper name for this prayer is called the Our Father. And, and, and rightly so. It focuses us. Like the football player, like the basketball player, like the musician, like the worker, focus. Where is our focus? Our Father who is in heaven. Your name is hallowed. Your name is holy. May your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. May your will be done. And give us today what we need. What are those things that we need? Well, you know them because you're our Father. I ask for a piece of bread, but you give me the greatest of meals. You give me something that I could never thirst again or never go hungry from. And lead us not into temptation. In other words, keep me away from those evil things that take my mind away. But most importantly, forgive me because I know I'm a sinner. But how are you going to forgive me, Father? In the same way that I forgive others. If I don't forgive others, I shouldn't expect something from you because you're a fair God. And finally, yours is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever, we say to God. Now, our Father sets the pace. It is the focus by which we live our lives. And so here is a challenge for you, a very simple challenge. Begin and end your days with this Our Father prayer. It is the way to focus in your life and your subconscious as well. That's why I say end your day. Just before you go into that dream state of sleep, imagine the last words in your head. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Armenian, we recite the Haer Mer. Haer Mer vor Herginus, yes. And many of us learn these as children. We learn them, and unfortunately, in learning them, we recite them rather than to really think about what the meaning of these, these prayers are. The Our Father is the focus in our life. It lets us realize that God takes care of us. Jesus says, look at the birds of the air. They take off, they go places, they do what they want. Not one of them thinks about tomorrow. Not one of them. They enjoy life. And your heavenly Father takes care of them. How much more are you worth? How much more important are you? Won't your heavenly Father take care of you? He says, look at, the, look at, look at the, uh, the, the earth, the flowers, the grass. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. In fact, if you've done any gardening, you know you take it and you put it in the compost pile. In old days, they would take it and they'd throw it into the fire. He says, if the grass looks so beautiful, and in fact, he goes one step even further. He says, take a look at the f- flowers. Even Solomon, the greatest of kings, was never, never dressed in such beauty. And I see that every time I look at a flower. You go look at a flower, look how beautiful they are. God takes care of them. God plants them and he makes them grow. He makes them flower. Their beauty is is unseen anywhere else. If God takes care of them, which are here today and gone tomorrow, how much more will he take care of you? You who are his creation, created in his image. Now you have this chance today. You have this chance to focus in. And whatever it is in your life, if you focus in, you understand that that's where your discipline begins. That's where as a human being, you can move forward. 
Because we all have troubles. We all have difficulties. And really, if you think about it, that's the one thing that lacks in all of our lives, that focus. When you focus in on Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Today we spoke about Father. We're going to be speaking about the Son and the Holy Spirit in coming weeks, in coming episodes. But I wanted to begin. We're, we're still new in this In Steps with Christ st- series. And I wanted to begin at the very beginning, the Father. Now we think of Father many times as this ageless thing. Now, um, unfortunately, we get a lot of our images from uh, movies. And so you think of God as this old man, somebody who's before time. One of our saints, Saint Nectarios, he said so beautifully, he said, seek God not outside of you, but within you. And that's why Jesus said the kingdom is within and without you. Think about that for a moment. Contemplate that for a moment. Let it be something that you meditate on this week. When you look for God outside of you, Look deep within and focus. And you realize that you are his loved one, that he is father, that he is with you, one that cares for you, is compassion for you, and is with you. Next week when we return, we're going to be talking about something very special because during the week this week, we had Groundhog's Day, February 2nd. Did you celebrate You're going to say, now, what is this priest talking about Groundhog's Day? Isn't that that little animal that comes out, Punxsutawney Phil? What does that have to do with religion? You're going to have to wait till next week. Until then, I want to wish you all the best. God's blessings in your homes and in your lives. Stay focused. Listen to the meditation. And I can't wait to meet you again next week. In the meantime, please join us at our websites at innerschoes.org as well as epostle.net where we do apostolic evangelism for an electronic universe. And so I greet you and I wish you all the best and remind you that all of this is done in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.